was like, oh, that's bad. <laughs> oh, God. Hello, there. That's what I wanted to say. You ruined the opening. I'm sorry. It's fine. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> I was trying to do a thing. It didn't work. You tried to smile. That was the thing. Yeah. Oh, God. But it was bad. <laughs> it was like... Yeah, it was it was it was a Chandler Bing kind of smile, and I went, "Nope, I'm gonna bail out that one real quick." <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's, that was what it was. Oh. oh well, we like Chandler, so you know it's we fine. Do. Hi everyone. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> um, so, do you want to introduce our podcast before we get into? I, I can do that. Yeah. Hi everyone. Welcome to all the films we judged before. I'm Katie, and that is Lily Kay. Oh, hello. I am not Troy Baker. I'm Troy Faker. Um, <laughs> and uh, today, before we get into what I planned, I will ask Katie, what Hi. did you watch? Um, not a whole lot. Mm. Um, I did watch a couple of things. I've been... Pardon me. Uh, 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 Friday is kind of my day of watching things at the moment. Okay. Because um, Friday is when Ted Lasso comes out, as well as Shmigadoon. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so I watched both of those. Ted Lasso continues to be excellent. Nice. Shmigadoon is also very fun. Nice. But I did also start watching a show, which is just which just dropped on Apple TV, mm -hmm. called Mr. Corman, which is uh, was created by Joseph Gordon Levitt. Oh, nice. and he's like in he's he's the main character in it and everything. He's um kind of a thirty something. Uh, he's a teacher but like clearly wanted to be a musician at some point in his life and but kind of gave up on that because it wasn't working and seems to sort of be losing control a little bit of his life not really sh like he seems a bit it's that kind of like millennial experience of like I'm not satisfied with my life ah. yeah, 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 yeah. and it's one of those weird things where it's like I hmm, I th I really am enjoying it because of the mood that it's setting up and everything. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure it's actually good. Oh. <laughs> oh. I didn't expect that. <laughs> um it's like I it's got the feel of like an indie movie that mm -hmm. I the kind of indie movie that I love where it's like this feels like somebody who wanted to make a thing. Yeah. And it kind of I like the mood of that. Yeah. I don't know if the storytelling aspect of it, the actual way it is doing the the storytelling. If the I don't think the cat, I don't know if the characters are actually like likable enough to like pull uh, the whole thing off. Gotcha. But it satisfies something in me as like somebody who likes this kind of filmmaking that kind of makes me go, yeah, I'm into this. I don't think I'd recommend it to anybody. I'm not into it. <laughs> okay. It's really kind of avant garde and where it's like weird sort of animated sort of bits and pieces, and there's mm. like the music is really interesting in it. Um, the second episode involved him just having like an anxiety attack the entire time, which oh. was kind of like shown by this like big burning asteroid that was kind of constantly coming down towards him. And every time like there was like something that kind of triggered him a bit, there was this like sort of bing noise in the music. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting there going, this is a bit too real. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, I know I feel this one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Recognizes. But it's interesting. I don't know how, where it's going to go. I think there's going to be 10 episodes. And you know, Apple TV like to, they do things weekly, but weekly, when the yeah. first episode goes up, they do two episodes. Yeah. So I got to watch two at once. And I was kind of like, oh, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. You have my interest. I don't know if it's going to be for everybody. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be. <laughs> um, but I like it. So I'm just going to keep at it anyway. Good. Sounds good. But other than that, I haven't really watched anything else. I haven't really been watching any movies because I've been knee deep in in D D land. Ah. It's just my brain is in full hyperfixation mode at the moment, doesn't really <laughs> want to do anything else. <laughs> I mean that's fair. <laughs> it happens. Uh I've been watching animation because Ooh. I I don't know. I I I real first of all I realized that I missed out on a few ones. Uh mm. one of them was Over the Moon on Netflix. Uh, I don't know why I didn't watch it when it came out, uh, but I did. Didn't I look this one up? This sounds familiar. Just I can't remember. It was it was heavily advertised, and uh, uh, you know it's it's a uh, a musical one. And, huh. uh, I loved it. I loved it. It was uh, you know it 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 could have been a lot better. I would say that like uh, you know I I felt like that 
um, the subject they were taking on was a very important one. And I, I think they did a good job uh, to talk about it and, to, you know, to uh, take it into account. Uh, but I think they could have done an excellent job. And I don't think that was there. <laughs> but the missed music, it. yeah, they, they missed it a little bit. But the music was amazing. Like, you know, I, I was blown away by it. And, and uh, the other thing I... Uh, I didn't really like is that the animation at the beginning and and at the end is beautiful and I think uh, what they decided to go with when they are actually on the moon is is a bit weird. <laughs> the more for you? Yeah, it's it's just it 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 took me out of the movie for a mm. good few minutes. I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I like it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm like, I'm not sure if I like this. Like, you know, it, it was it was bugging my eyes. I'm not, I think mm. It's, mm, it was weird. Uh, it was still a really good movie. Like, So I would definitely recommend watching it. Um, and then the other thing that came out on Friday was Vivo. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been hearing with, lots of lovely things about that. With Lin-Manuel Miranda and... Ah, I think this is my favorite thing he did. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, I've been hearing a lot of very good things about the music and stuff. I haven't kind of uh, looked it. It's it was like you know all the songs were very very good. Like I loved all of them, and that's rare for me. Like I I I always have at least a few songs that I'm like eh, I eh. don't know how much I like you. I'm not, eh. I'm not sure, but these ones are just beautiful. Uh, I. Didn't look up the cast, uh, but there was one person other than Lin. I immediately, no, two, two. Uh, I immediately recognized one of them was Zoe Sadana, who I love. <laughs> yes, I did. So I was like immediately, oh, Zoe, oh my God. I was already happy. And then Michael Rooker is in it. And I'm like, ah, <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> it is a fun cast. It is. It Gloria is. Estefan. Gloria Estefan. Yes, I was so happy <laughs> for I was like, yes, oh my Nicole god. Uh, Tyre, Brian Tyree Henry. Yeah, yeah. Very funny people. Yeah, yeah. And it was really good. I liked the animation. It was it was a bit weird at first, but I got used to it very quickly. And uh, you know, I just I just loved every choice they made in this and uh, the music was fun, everything was fun, so I highly recommend this movie. It's very, very good. Um and I watched the Suicide Squad. Yeah, I gotta get on that. Oh, you do. <laughs> I do. I loved it. Like I love James Gunn in general. Like you know, and and I I think I don't know. Well documented. Who, who I talked with. Yes. <laughs> but <laughs> I think it was still that uh, you know uh, he is the kind of person who I feel like he he stayed the same as he always was. Like you know, obviously. He had some changes, but uh, you know, he's he's always kind to people. He's always kind to his fans. I had many interactions with him, so I'm like, I'm very proud of that. <laughs> like, you know, a lot of times I would leave a comment and he would answer, and you know, it it was like, oh, that's like so cool. <laughs> like, you know, how many people do that? Not many, uh, I think. And uh, and it's nice to see that he's keep doing that. And uh, um, I I really like James Gunn. He's, he's He's speaking my language. I'm not. Hmm. I I am not too happy about his last interview where he said that major deaths are gonna happen in Guardians of the Galaxy three, and I'm like, wait, sorry, what's not gonna happen? Major deaths. Major deaths. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I I I. I... <laughs> I thought you were talking about a character who was a major, which is where my brain was getting confused. And I was like, uh, deaths, gotcha. Deaths, I'm, yeah. I'm a bit... <laughs> so I understand. I read that this morning and I was like, what? Like, if he kills Gamora, we're not going to be friends, James, anymore. I'm <laughs> just saying, you know? Like, I love Gamora, so please... Please don't kill her. She's already died once. I, I know that's like, you know, <laughs> that was enough trauma for me. I don't need another one, so please don't do that. <laughs> but uh, but back to Suicide Squad. I, I just loved uh, what he was able to achieve with this many characters. And it showed to DC that you can actually do it. <laughs> When you have a good screenplay and you have a fucking great director, I think yeah, it's it's. I think James Gunn came in with kind of the perfect um, mm-hmm. set of circumstances around him because he 
just been like go from Guardians and DC were like, come, come over here, come, come over here. Yeah. So we'll just give you all the research and you can yeah. do whatever you like. Yeah. And, and it's those sure. sneaky people at Disney, those assholes, we, we're not going to be like them. Do, do it, do whatever you like. And it's like, <laughs> hey, have you considered letting your other directors do that? Instead of like policing them constantly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a good question. I don't think they have. Um, but uh, yeah, it was it was great. I loved everyone in it. I was a bit sad about a few things. I'm not gonna lie. I was like, I was crying on this movie, which never happened with a recent DC film. No, wait, I'm lying. I did cry on Shazam. So you know. Yeah, well, Shazam was just good. Yeah, it was just <laughs> Shazam was was just good. Yeah, that's um, true. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I I loved. I think I have to agree with everyone who says that this is the best version of Harley Quinn that could, that we could have asked oh, for. Like Margot is just beautiful, just just gorgeous. Uh, I love the effects. I love the creative ideas that he put in there. I just I was blown away by it, and and everyone is just great. Like honestly, I couldn't point at anyone and say, yeah, he was weaker than the others. Everyone was great. I I really really enjoyed it, and obviously James Gordon brought in the music. <laughs> he always he he has such a good taste. I'm sorry, I have to put that out there. Um, so yeah, watch the Suicide Squad. It's great. I already see reports that uh, you know people are a bit very to go and and watch it because of the previous suicide squad apparently at least that's what some folks are writing about uh but please watch it it's it's worth it it's it's great it's it's really funny i laughed way too hard at some parts <laughs> so I, I got dirty looks <laughs> i was like mm, i'm sorry i should try to do that this week because i got i'm i'm doing i got a job next week yes. what? Oh, <laughs> oh my god oh my god work <laughs> crazy right. um so I, sh- I should try to do that Please. this, this week. Please. I'll stay, still have time to rest a little bit. Yeah. I also have to still rest of see Black Widow, but like... Oh just... my God. And uh, I, I am afraid to ask, but did you watch Doctor Strange? No. God. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, oh Katie, watch Doctor Strange. <laughs> Please. Uh, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm, like I said, I'm in a and d group at the moment. I'm watching a lot of D&D. Not. Actual play has a lot of hours attached to, attached to it. Oh, God. Uh, fine. But still watch it before Multiverse of Madness comes out. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll get to it at some point. But I've got, like, a year. So. Yeah. I'm not happy about the news that, you know, they are already pushing some movies again. Uh, mm. to to new dates so i'm like oh, please don't <laughs> yeah i don't know <laughs> i don't know how well i can handle like not not the movie part especially well that as well obviously i love movies but like the other stuff that comes with this situation i don't know if i would be listen i think the one that's really pissed me off the most at the moment is the fact that they cancelled the uk release like cinema release for the green knight yeah. i wanted to see death patel's really pretty face in 4k on my large cinema screen <laughs> It's not even but gonna they, come here. I can't even watch it. I mean, they haven't announced where they're gonna be like, like they haven't announced any kind of like alternative. I mean, mm-hmm. and I really, I, I want to go see it in the cinema, but Same. but they haven't even given like like especially for, for the UK people, they were just like we're postponing the release. We're not gonna give you a new date. And I'm like, I, uh, no. Yeah. I wanted to see our theory and legend, and people say it's really good. Yeah. All the reviews are like, this movie is beautiful. And I'm like, I thought it would be. Yeah. I want to see it so bad. We didn't even have a release date for it in Hungary. So I'm like, I don't know. I guess I have to wait till it comes out. (laughs) Guess I'll die. Guess I'll die. (laughs) (laughs) But I am very frustrated with that as well. Like, you know, I was looking it up. Like, when is it coming? When is it coming? I even talked with my friend who owns the cinema here and he was like I don't know I have I don't have any information about it and I was like ah, that's <laughs> fucking great <laughs> so no green knight let me us. see the green knight <laughs> yes please. please please I was I was talking to Tom the other day yes. and he was like why don't you just come to America and I was like yeah that's a good idea I'll spend a grand on a plane ticket and he just, goes, yeah just and to watch 20 bucks 
<laughs> and 20 bucks because the cinema's not free. Oh, yeah. That's true. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you make a very good point. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. All right. Before we get into what I planned today, I would like to ask for your full attention, dear people. We have a very good friend uh, here uh. in the group called Jay. And many of you know her. And uh, there's a GoFundMe going at the moment for her. Uh, I'm going to put it on the screen. And I'm going to put it down in uh, the description as well. Please, if you can spare any money, like even just $5, please consider donating her. Uh, everything is written down there. But basically, uh, she needs to move within two months and in the US that's not an easy thing to do <laughs> like you know it's a lot of money Let's she got put screwed it. over pretty royally and it's yeah. not fair <laughs> it's not fair at all uh, so I will say it one more time at least uh, in this episode but please 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 if you can or even if you can just share it that's a big help as well we appreciate it yeah. uh, we would very very much appreciate it we we love Jay so. we do she does us better than what she's been sort of handed recently so yeah, yeah. so Hopefully you can help in any way you can. Uh, one thing is for sure, once I get my first paycheck, I'm just going to be like, Jay, done. But I have to wait for that a little bit longer. <laughs> it's just a tiny bit, but it's coming, it's coming. I'm hopeful. <laughs> okay, so today we are playing a game. Again. This is this is as much as I know. Lily's yes. done the thing again where she's like, I've got a game planned, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you're gonna love this one because it will we will have to think. Which is a good which is a good thing. Um... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, real quick, just yes. before we get into it. Yes. My background is currently my background on my computer as well. And I wanted to actually shout it out because it's gorgeous and all the people, because it's a critical role background, because that's all I've really been watching recently. But I wanted to give a shout out to the artist because I never do this and I should do this more often. <laughs> um, this is uh, Lap Pung Chung. Mm. Um, you can find him on Twitter under the same name. Uh, he does a bunch of art for critical role and it's all fucking gorgeous. I mean, look at how pretty everybody is in this. And it's, it's just a really nice piece of art. Um, so I just wanted to actually give the artist name for that. I'll uh, give you his um, Twitter profile so you can put it in the description because yes. he's very good and this is very it's pretty. And I'm sorry good. if I said your name wrong, but I'm pretty sure I, I, I feel like it was clo uh, I just, you were yeah, close. Yeah, I don't know. I, <laughs> I feel like I might have been close, but I'm really sorry if I said it wrong because it's your art is gorgeous anyway it that's is. all i wanted to say it is we, we butchered names in this podcast so we apologize it happens um, <laughs> you know, i should just learn how to say more names because fuck me i guess <laughs> we should know. just ask uh, siri or alexa to say it instead of us <laughs> i don't know if that's better <laughs> i don't know we should try it at one point uh but anyway today's game is called how would you fix that Okay, sorry, I've gone out of... There we go, sorry. There, there you go, there you go. That's there how I fix focused. that. There you go. <laughs> okay, we can leave now. Um... Okay, thanks everybody. <laughs> so, basically, I want you to choose a TV show or a film. And, you know, I want you to fix one thing about it. Like, one thing that you think would make it better. It can be anything from, you know, a character, from... Uh, where the story went to mm. whatever you can think of so obviously pick a movie or a tv series that has flaws in your opinion and if those flaws would be corrected it would be actually freaking great mm. Mm. i had two things come to mind okay because they're two things that i think about quite a lot uh, or at least i have been thinking about quite a lot all right let's put this in a different way there's a movie that i think about quite a lot that well, I remember watching it and I have talked to this to you about this a little bit before mm -hmm. and I remember watching it being like this concept is so good the execution is terrible okay okay um and that was uh Solace oh is that what yes. it was called it was not called... Solaris isn't it no it's um is it Solace I think it was called Solace it was something like that yeah it's Solace oh Solace yes that's the one yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um uh Hang on, I gotta click on it because I want to be sure I've got everybody. It's a Colin Farrell movie with Anthony Hopkins, That's where it. Anthony Hopkins is like 
a serial killer who has psychic abilities. And so much of the movie is really interesting in that mm-hmm. it's got like really interesting cinematography and all this sort of stuff. I'm sorry. I, I, I did, I, I got a couple of things mixed up there. Anthony Hopkins is a psychic doctor who helps to track, track down the serial killer who was also psychic and he yes. is played by Colin Farrell. Yes. And it's like, there's some really interesting sequences where they like show him kind of like going through all the different possibilities of what like he could do next because mm-hmm. he's and and it's really interesting put together trouble is the movie doesn't treat its audience it doesn't treat its characters as being particularly smart in that there are i think i was watching it like there are obvious jumps in logic that this movie is refusing to make because it would move the plot along too quickly and it's like if i can figure this out the characters in the movie should be able to figure this out and yeah. the fact that you're ignoring it feels conspicuous. Mm. And that is the main thing that I feel like you could just... There was so much more to play with in the concept of this film if they had allowed the characters to be smarter than they kind of were within the film. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess that's just... It's been a while since I've watched it. Like, it's been a couple of years. So I don't remember a lot of the specifics of how to, like, really mention it and stuff. Because, yeah. I mean, the cast was so good. Yeah. You've got all of like the direction was great. I burped again. Um, <laughs> the performances were all so good. It was truly the script that needed work. Yeah. And like just the understanding of like story beats. It's like maybe it's because I have watched a lot of criminal profiling based TV shows in the past. But it was just, I just remember sitting there going, oh my, but some of this is so obvious to me. Mm. And if it's this obvious to me, it should be this obvious to to the characters, especially if one of them is a psychic uh, (laughs) working with the FBI. It's like, mm, it just, yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, if you treat your characters as being like the smartest people in the room, your audience is going to catch up, right? Yeah. You don't have to spell things out for your audience. They're probably smarter than you, they, you think they are. And I think the best way to go about these sorts of things is to make assumptions on behalf of the audience, get somebody else to come in and be like, who doesn't know anything and see if there's anything that you think is super obvious that the audience then actually doesn't pick up because you've made it too obtuse. Like, I feel like it's easier to go from a place of being too obtuse to pulling out mm-hmm. um, than it is to like after... It, I mean, maybe not easier, but like smarter. It's a smarter move to to kind of um, assume more of your audience than um, you know some movies do, like this yeah. one. Yeah, it was such. A t- I really liked the, the everything about the concept of this movie. I was like, this should have been better than it was. <laughs> And it's a movie that I actually really like. So I'm like... I know, here's the thing, I didn't hate it. That's the thing, because it is really visually interesting. And like like I said, the concept is great. Mm. It just doesn't execute it well. Yeah. Um, do you want me to do my other one? Or would you yeah, like to? Yeah, yeah. Okay. The other one I'm thinking of, because I have two friends who are currently, my best friend and uh, another friend of mine, are both currently making their way through the X-Files. Okay. Um, which is a show that I have loved for a very long time now. I mean, it's the, you know ridiculous in many ways, and I think part of the charm is that it's ridiculous in a lot of ways. Trouble was, um, when they did the reboot, the last season, I didn't yes. even finish because I heard about some stuff that they decided to um, reveal. Mm. Um, and I think the way to fix that is to stop letting Chris Carter play with Mulder and Scully because he doesn't understand them. <laughs> <laughs> He has not understood them for a very long time. He just, all right, I'm going to go some spoilers and stuff because it's, a, yeah, it finished a couple of years ago. So mm. if you don't want spoilers for the X-Files uh, or the, re, you know, the revival seasons, then you should still watch it. But near the end of the, se- the show, like the original run of the show, Scully had a kid. The kid was supposed to be Mulder's because he, she was like, I want to have a child. And she asked Mulder in an apparently totally platonic way. And he was like, yes, I will father your child. And it's like, these two men, come on. <laughs> um, and it was like all lovely. They kind of ended this show pretty much on this beautiful sort of like, um, they saved Mulder from prison. I can't remember why he was there, but he was in jail for a bit. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, he met, uh, oh, I think there's a certain, Scully had to give her baby away um, at a certain point because it was too dangerous to be, to kind of keep him. But it was meant to, it was Mulder and Scully's child. He, he was yeah. 
their son. Yeah. The show then decided, Chris Carter then decided in the last season, at the because they did two seasons of the revival, in the last season was like, actually, no, this uh, child was not Mulder's. It was the chain smoking man's. And it was um, uh, basically, and I'm going to do a little trigger warning for some sexual assault stuff right now, just in case, um, and say that um, apparently the chain smoking man raped Scully and that's how she got that child. And actually the child is Mulder's brother instead of uh, his son. And the whole thing is fucking ridiculous and disgusting. And it's kind of no wonder Julian Anderson was like, I'm not going to be coming back for another season after this. And I don't blame her. And I never finished the other season. And it's like, maybe, just maybe, you just don't do that. That's how you fix that. You just don't do that at all. You make it actually so that that is Mulder's son. And you, you allow Mulder and Scully a bit of peace and happiness in their lives and you just leave the chain smoking man out of it and all of this weird gross stuff you've decided to do with the women in your show. Well, I only th- I've only seen a few episodes as I told you already, but I guess. <laughs> the actual original run of the show is great. And it's got issues, obviously, because it was like in the late yeah. 90s and, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and this, uh, this stuff. And it's also just like, perfectly ridiculous in a bunch of ways yeah but um yeah just i i tell this to people is like just don't bother with the, like i think that maybe the first season of the revival was pretty good i never even finished the second because i read about what happened and i was like no yeah no yeah. so that's how you fix that you just don't do that yeah i mean it sounds like a very fair point to be just, you just don't do that you just don't do that you treat your women like women that's how you do yeah women like people who uh don't need to just be the um, victims of violent uh, sexual crime. Mm. Fair. Okay. Okay. Fair. I actually have two and a half. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I will start with the half because it, it's going to be really short. Okay. I was looking for a horror movie the other day because I have this horror addiction. I don't know where it came from, but it's it, it lives Again, well documented. Yes. <laughs> And I found a movie on Netflix called Rust Creek. And I was like, okay. Eh, okay, this sounds interesting. It looked like an indie film. So I was like, okay, let's go. Because actually, indie horror movies can be fucking great. Mm. Um, <laughs> and it's basically, uh, the girl has to go to a job interview. I think, I believe in, in Washington or, or something like that. Uh, Washington or Washington, D.C.? Because those are on two different sides of the country. I think D.C. Okay. Yeah, I think D.C. It doesn't matter, but basically she gets lost. She, uh, for some reason, oh yeah, because it's like they, they, there's a big accident or something like that. And she gets down from the highway and, you know, goes into these villages and whatnot. And she goes into the forest, in a, in a forest road. And when she turns back, because she realizes that she's Google is not helping her or anything, she turns back and uh, two guys who noticed her uh, go after her. And, you know, it, 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 they stop her and it easily turns out that, you know, they are bad news. And I was like, OK, this is OK. This is where, you know, obviously the action is going to start. <laughs> and then and then this girl decides to fight them. Which is okay, you you know they they are pretty interesting folks. So I'm like, okay, that's good. They, she's gonna fight them, and she gets on the big one, the 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 big guy. Uh, she manages to grab his knife. She manages to cut him on the leg, but then drops the knife. The guy grabs the knife. Uh, she, he also manages to cut her on the leg. So basically everyone is cut on the leg. Cool. While, while the other guy is, is out for some reason, I think she knocks him out or something like that. Mm-hmm. But, and this is where I got so frustrated that I had to turn it off because I was like, this is just stupid. So there is her car. There mm-hmm. is their car as well. And then instead of going into one of the cars... Obviously, hers would be the best choice because her phone is in there. Uh, she just runs into the woods. And I'm like, but they were they were basically out. They could barely get up. You could easily get into your fucking car. And you decide to run into the woods with a wounded leg. And I'm like, this is, this is just bullshit. This is not how you make your plot move ahead. 
<laughs> just don't do this, okay? Like, instead, instead of sending her into the forest, let's say, give her the, the benefit that she's actually smart and makes a logical decision, get her into the car and make one of the guys, you know, reach after her and maybe just pull her out and have her run into the woods afterwards or... or for some reason, take the car out. Like, yeah. slash a tire. You've got a knife, slash a tire. But, but just because, you know, it's it, I, I didn't even understand her decision. I was like, but why would you? But, uh, huh? <laughs> so I didn't even watch it. I was like, nope. <laughs> I can't, I can't. You know, I, we, we talked about stupid decisions in movies. And, you know, when, when you make your character intentionally stupid, and I'm like... Don't do it for the sake of the plot. Like, right. you know, a smart decision can lead to something horrible as well. So you don't have to make them fucking stupid. So please don't do that. Uh, but yeah, maybe give her the chance to actually uh, drive away. But let have the, the whole village turn out to be fucking lunatics. And, and she's in a trap anyway or something, you know, or or have the guys follow her. I don't know, but don't, not like this. Not like this. Not like this. <laughs> not like this. It had really great reviews, and I, that's why I decided to watch it because I now frantically, frank, frank. How did you say it? Fra uh, frantically. Frantically, yeah. Thank you. Uh, looking at at the ratings because I I already burned myself a few times, so <laughs> I have to check <laughs> if it's safe to watch it. But this one, I do not agree with the reviews. Although I have to say, I only watched like fifteen minutes like 20 something like that um so yeah that that's the half one uh the other one it it, it won't be a surprise it's gone girl <laughs> which i just as you know from this <laughs> podcast i hate that movie it pissed me off so much not just the movie the book as well like oh, it gave me so much anxiety i was like no <laughs> this is it cannot work like this i do not have a problem with people outsmarting other people if it's done right. But the fact that this woman wasn't even in, like, it, they didn't even look into the cases properly. It was basically just, even in the book, it comes off as, you know, she told her story and she's so shaken by it and she must be telling the truth. And the FBI is like, yeah, she's telling the truth. I'm not going to go after, you know, searching facts even though she kills like three people while she's away so i'm like i will never be able to get you on board with like that's the point no <laughs> <laughs> like that is the point no. they, they're meant to be stupid that, that, but it doesn't work like that like you know but it does work like that no. in a lot of ways no i am so pissed at that movie but you know i i don't even care that i figured it out after 10 pages that it's going to be the woman i don't even care you know it, it it's it's kind of a a plot that i think it was i i was accepting it i was like yeah okay it, that's what's gonna happen uh but but this part like i was i i really like the part where um you know uh they showed her side of of the story of like you know what she was doing and blah 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 i like that part like Okay, that's good. And then and then the ending, I was like, this would never fly. <laughs> it's like, what about the two people she kills at the motel? Like, you know, no one is going to question that or, or they never going to link that case back to her or there are no CCTV cameras that caught her in the act. And I'm like, it's, it's, and she just straps the guy. She just, she just straps him. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's so good. And I'm like, no. <laughs> This is not how it works. <laughs> I can't. Like, I can't. They, I've given you all of my arguments for this, and you just say no. So there's really no point in me arguing with no. you here. And you know, since says, uh, how would you fix that game? Uh, I would fix it like this. Okay, she's incredibly smart. You know, she has all the steps laid out, and you know, obviously, she built up how it's gonna go down. Yeah, okay. Good, great, but. At the ending, fucking have a proper interrogation. Because there were a lot of th things being brought up while she was missing. 
you know, obviously towards her husband, all these things that uh, she bought with his money, I think it was. Or no, it was her money. Her money. Okay, there were all those things. Oh, well, okay, no, she, she no. bought a bunch of stuff um, in his name to make in it look name. like he was being... Yes. Irresponsible with the money and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She did that. Everything like she she also but like every time from the moment she left, she was paying with cash so there wasn't any way to trace her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically because you know the whole thing plays out as as it was I don't remember Ben Affleck's name in it, but uh but that it was Ben Affleck's character who who killed Nick. Nick. Uh, Nick Dunn. And and Amy, wasn't it? Yeah, Nick and yeah. Amy. Uh, it was Nick who killed Amy because that was the whole gameplay, basically. Like you know, it, it was it was. She him. set up the crime to be too perfectly put together so that it was easy to unravel and then point towards him. Yes, basically, and that's like you know that. okay. She's super smart. That's fucking great. I love that. Like I I love that part about the whole thing. But you know, even when you are super smart, and that's pointed out in many different books and movies as well you, you, you're still gonna make mistakes and basically that's what happens when uh, Amy goes to yeah she gets her stuff stolen and whatnot yeah. the point is that then she takes it back she goes okay I've been fucked over a bunch of times and then that she manages to bring it back around and still make it work in her favor but I do here's, here's where I get um, my hackles up I still, I think, for that story to be as effective as it as it should be, she still needs to win at the end. Oh no! No, she mm. does mm. because that's the point: is that Amy wins always. I don't, I don't. Nick doesn't. It's not. I don't. Nick isn't smart enough to win against her. It, like, he doesn't get that chance. I don't. I don't buy that in any way, shape, or form. He. Uh, yeah, she, 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 he can never outmaneuver her because she's always going to be one step ahead. I think you could do it in a way, I like the idea of them actually trying to interrogate her, but I, the way, the reason that that movie and that book is, is so, I like it so much, is the fact that she, she wins at the end. I hate that. She, she, <laughs> and I don't think you need to like that she wins like like actually like that she 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 wins but i think that on a narrative level that's a more satisfying ending to me than uh, and then he gets her back at the end it's like no fuck that she's terrifying she's meant to be terrifying in how that's, that's fine you know i am okay with that but uh, i hate the fact that she wins because it wouldn't happen i don't believe although we have amber heard in our life so you know it's like that's not even true that fucking bitch i hate her uh anyway <laughs> but um no no i don't think i don't think if because Gillian flynn who wrote the book and uh, uh it is so realistic in many parts you know how it was built up and blah 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 the characters whatnot and you know, I agree. Like Nick is not on Amy's level. I agree with that as well because it's it's obvious from the movie and from the book. Uh, they actually did a really great job translating the book into the mo into a movie. Yeah, she, it's because she wrote the script. As yeah, well. yeah, she yeah, yeah. It. It's good. Uh, so you know, I I I I do agree with that. But uh, I don't think, it's especially if the FBI is involved, because it it grows out to be this huge S case. Uh, you know, and Nick is by the end is at the point where he has to defend himself because everyone is like ah, you killed your wife whatnot and every everything is pointing in that direction but but then amy comes back and you know nick knows that she's a fucking maniac basically and uh, there are things that are pointing to that conclusion because no one can say that there aren't and they just let it go they just like oh okay she's back great and the guy who kidnapped her, because I think that's the story she comes up with. Yeah. Uh, the guy who kidnapped her, yeah, that's it. That was it. We don't have to look she, into this. <laughs> yeah, no, she she spins it as she killed him because she was in danger. 
Like she, she, she's Wasn't not it like the... a kidnap story. Like she yeah, yeah, but she, 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 but she comes back covered in blood, so she's not yes, denying not the fact that. that she killed him. Yeah, I know, I know. It's, I know. it's just the the fact that they, the, the um, and no, I don't believe that they would necessarily because I mean, you can. There are so many examples of the FBI bungling cases and not looking into things properly because it's too convenient to. It's just more convenient to not do that. That is perfectly logical to me. They're not an all powerful uh, institution, and they are incredibly corrupt as, as many police organizations are and it's like yeah it's 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 a convenient lie and the only reason i like the ending of the book better than the film because i think the book builds up um the fact that nick goes no i'm gonna i'm not finished fighting this i'm gonna get you back for this and he built he actually compiles like a shit ton of evidence together yeah. and it's like and then she got he comes to her and goes i've got all this stuff against you and then she goes yeah but here's the thing i'm pregnant with your child and if you do anything to do with this i will kill our baby and then it's like, oh, Jesus, OK. And because Nick is like actually a decent person, he's a bit of a shit, but he's not going to like he, he stays in order to like protect the child. But I don't think he ever decides he's going to stop fighting. And the, but that's just where the story ends. I don't think the, the movie does a good enough job of, of building that part up for me personally. That was the one gripe that I had with it when I saw it, where it was like, it doesn't feel like Amy's win at the end um, is grasped well enough because mm. mm. um, I know my mum hates the ending as well but I think she hates it on a more of a level it's like I don't want her to win it's like well no nobody wants her to win but like she does yeah. um, uh, I just yeah I, I feel like I think the book did that better because it, 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 there was like a really long build up to him being like I am still working with this FBI woman because she also doesn't she doesn't trust it she doesn't trust her um and if there's but, like one person and there's two in this case, I think even the lawyer is like, hey, that's a weak guy in the end. You know? Yeah, I, d I don't think the movie, I think the only reason that people kind of start to back down is because he gets scared of the idea that, of what she's going to do to this child that is going to be his. Mm. Um, yeah, it, 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 she's not maneuvering things in the way that means that like, I don't know, I can see how you could actually, you know, get me arrested and all this stuff, but you're not going to do that because I have all of this blackmail against you. I like to think that post that, that ending, especially in the book, there was a, he eventually figured out a way to like, get the child away from her. It's like, you're fucking crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think like, you know, I always see that, uh, Rosamund Pike, who plays Amy. Oh, she did a fucking fantastic job. She's, with that, she's great. Yes. She's so good. She's great. I think that's the reason uh, they put her in I Care a lot, uh, which I already talked about, and I have the same problem in it that I have here. It basically, I Care a lot, did what Gone Girl should have done at the end. Where, yes, in that, she gets away with basically everything, but then justice comes around, turns around, and be like, Whoosh! no bitch <laughs> and i'm like yeah but it's like that's not the point of the story it's not about justice it's never been about justice okay i get that but it's still bullshit <laughs> you know you can't convince me about this <laughs> like the fact that she wins and and she wins like that i would even argue that if i wouldn't be in in nick's place i would even question if she's pregnant like you know i think he probably does but i think she also actually has a lot of in the the point is that she's so good at gaslighting him that he's never going to be able to be sure about anything. And she will go as far, like, she won't be able to fake just being pregnant. She will have to get a child. And that child will be in danger because she's there. And she will play the perfect mother. But she's terrifying enough that, like, at some point he's going to have to figure out a way to get them both out. Bullshit. I don't like it. it I also feel like <laughs> you're playing into realism a bit too much because it is pulpy. It's a pulpy um, crime drama where, like, a lot of the things you're like, yeah, of course this wouldn't actually happen, but like, for the sake of a narrative, it's interesting. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, I know. I'm it's never going to be on my page with this, but I just. No, because it's not interesting for me. Like, you know, uh, someone. Uh, when I wrote, but like, okay, yes, yeah. Then, then, then there's the thing. Is it just not interesting to you? Like, do you think that I, you, this is where we we get into that conversation of just sort of like, is this a bad storytelling just because you don't like it, or do you actively think that this is bad storytelling? 
I think the den- the ending is definitely is like you know I just I d- don't agree with it at all. Like the fact that everything just slides off. Like okay, she was kidnapped. Done. No I do I do specifically think the end of the movie isn't as effective as it could be. But it, but the book as well. I didn't like. I think the, bo- the book. I either. I think the book did it better. I did, Yeah, I think I think I will relent and say that there's probably a better way of doing mm. both of those endings. But I like the context. I like I like the the attempt at both of those endings, where it's like the point being it is that you know X Y and Z. She has a way to outmaneuver things. It does get to a point of being like it reaches the end of its believability at the end. We were just sort of like, okay, I'm gonna have to either make a decision to completely go against this, which I mm. believe you have, or just kind of go, okay, we're just gonna this is gonna be fine. Um, because it's like, yeah, I do think that the end of that film is the weakest part. I think everything yeah. up building up to that point is is that's great. I, it's I a like great that. fucking movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, do, I think I do like that. I know I'm gonna say I'm not, but the ending is just like, no, <laughs> like you know, <laughs> I hate the message that it communicates. Like you know, even even if I agree that you know there are cases that were probably fucked again. Up and... I don't think it's a moral thing. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I think. I think it should be. Now I will say it like this. I think it should be like you know. I I like smart people. Like I I think especially when a villain is is like really smart and doesn't go stupid at the end. Like I I like that. And I don't say that Amy should be like oh makes a dumb mistake and whatnot and and she gets discovered and so I I don't want that ending I want the ending where you know she obviously made mistakes during this journey and because it's it, it is pointed out and I didn't want it to be questioned at least like you know it's a bit com- like everything in the end is a bit too convenient mm-hmm. and I I just cannot believe that there was only two people who questioned it who were like ah hmm, maybe maybe we should look into this more like and the others were just like oh, okay yeah, it, it happened how she said it happened. She's shaken up by the whole thing and whatnot. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I I still like how it was built up. Mm. And, and, you know, obviously uh, the actors did a freaking awesome job. Like, you know, I, I think Rosalind especially, I hated her character. So she did a great job. <laughs> like Amy is a... I love Amy as a villain. Like, I She's like, a good villain. It, it's, it's that thing of like, obviously terrible people yeah obviously yeah. but as a villain i'm as, like yeah oh she's brilliant yeah. i like i just i love the context or like the concept of her as like a as a because you did like i think the thing that people really latched on to was like she was she was a female villain like you hadn't really seen before in cinema it was like it was kind of the sort of new sort of because you see a lot of men playing that kind of role the sort of sociopathic yeah. i'm charming and everybody will believe everything i say sort of thing so to have her kind of be that but like in female form i think it got went too far in the way that in, in the same way that people completely misunderstood the end of midsummer and that sort of thing where it's just sort of like you're not meant to actually be on her side you guys you do realize that yeah <laughs> like her way of viewing everything is incredibly warped it's got enough basis and like stuff you can get on board with but it's still like no yeah it's bad yeah, 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 yeah. but like as a villain and as a concept it's, like, it's that thing of like no, you don't have to. It, like liking villains is sort of moral failing, right? Mm. There are plenty of villains that you can look at and be like, "You're fascinating to me," yeah, and yeah, I really yeah. like the concept of you. Yeah. But obviously, that kind of moral moralizing mm. does not translate to real life. It's fiction. Fiction is not the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, I, I just, you know, I would put it like this: if we make our villain incredibly smart. I don't like when we dumb down people around the villain. Yeah, no, I think that's fair. Like, you know, it's... I get it. She or he is smart. Great. I love that. I, I love when the villain is smart, as you said it as well. But then don't make the people around them fucking stupid. <laughs> like, you know, mm. I, I, I think the the biggest thing I didn't like about the ending is is this, that, that there were only two people who were like... I think that's not entirely... Well, I mean, the, yes, the number of people who does... Do, be- do believe Nick is small but is, yeah. they are very important people within his life so he doesn't feel like he's being consistently like torn apart 
Like he, it's not. He gets he gets beaten down enough that it's like, oh geez, this guy. But he's still got like the FBI woman whose name I cannot fucking remember, but she's great in this movie. And then Carrie Coon, his sister. Yeah. And Carrie Coon being at the end of the movie and being like, you're just going to give up? What the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah, is yeah, a very yeah. important sort of... See, I love Carrie Coon so much. Mm. I'll watch her in anything. Fair. That's fair. <laughs> she's so good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's fair. But uh, yeah, I don't know if I can ever... Get no, that's fair. I, it's like, I, I will, I will happily relent in a lot of ways that that the ending to that movie is not perfect, mm-hmm. um, and probably could be improved in some form or another. I just don't know how to frame it, yeah, in a way that that would satisfy me in the way that the things that I do like about the film, because mm-hmm. uh, I think the way the things that I like about the film are not the things that you are gonna get any kind of enjoyment out of, like how I would change it, basically. I, w- I, I am guessing that you haven't watched I Care a lot. Uh, no, not yet. No, no, you haven't. Okay. Uh, okay, this is how I would fix Gone Girl. Give the ending from I Care A Lot to Gone Girl. Like, maybe not as violent. <laughs> that would be a bit too much. But, uh, you know, if people who saw it, they, they, they understand. And I do recommend watching I Care A Lot because it was actually a really good film. It pissed me mm. off for like half an hour. I was like, <laughs> no, why would you do this? Uh, but then it, it, it saved itself in the last two minutes. So I'm like, okay, yeah, okay. I can, I can, I can forgive you. You're, 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 you're okay. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, that would be my solution because... I just can't get on board with the fact that Amy Don would just get away with everything like this. I'm just like, nah, nah, man. <laughs> I like my villain smart, and I love that she is this fucking smart and figures out everything. But even smart people make mistakes, like you know, and uh, that's how many villains fall as well. So, and it's I feel like when it comes to Amy, there would have been a point, some point in the future where she would have fucked up. And Nick would have been paying attention enough that he probably would have caught it. Yeah. But like, I think where the, the film ends, it has to be in a place, to me, it has to be in a place where it's like, you're going to have to get better at this kid, otherwise you're never getting out of this. Just like, buck the fuck up and get get your head in the game. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if, if I can ever be able to forgive that <laughs> to this movie. It's the same, just so you know, it's it's the same with, with other films as well that are in the similar genre. Uh, but uh, because uh, when I put it on Facebook back when the movie came out, uh, a few people came at me as, uh, and said that it's because she's a woman, and I'm like, it has nothing to do with her gender. Like, I don't care that she's a woman. If it would be a man, it would be turn around and it would be Nick who's doing this to Amy. I would be just as pissed off about it. I'm like, I don't care. I don't care about the gender. I'm like, it's just it's not how it works in my mind and I just don't like it. I fucking hate that it's the ending that it got. Uh, So don't come at me. I don't care that Amy is a woman. You know, women can be smart. They are probably smarter than men in a lot of cases. Just going to put it out there. Uh, But, you know, it's just like, yeah, no, I don't care. It could be Nick. It could be literally anyone else. I still would hate this ending <laughs> so much it ruined the whole thing for me i'm not gonna lie i was like i i enjoy this story and, and you know it's it's a it's a great story and i like how it was built up and then you put this ending on and i'm like uh fuck uh and this is what happened i already talked about it this is what happened with defending jacob which is a great fucking show i i really enjoyed it up until the the fucking end i was fuming at the end of defending jacob i was like this is this is just it just can't be how it all ends like you know uh, it pissed me off so much that i, I actually you need to <laughs> stop watching um so. th- these kinds of things i don't think they're for you i don't think they're made for you i don't think they're made for your <laughs> sensibilities in storytelling or filmmaking <laughs> <laughs> it pissed me off so much that I actually went and, and bought the book that it was based on because I wanted to know if, if the book ended the same way. And it basically did. There were just a few changes uh, in what happened in the series that uh, from the book. And I was like, yeah, no. <laughs> I, still can't. I just can't get on board with it. Especially how they built up 
Chris Evans's character was the dad in the story, it just didn't it just didn't make sense. It just didn't make sense to have the dad thing. Like you know, uh, his character, I I do not believe would ever have done what he did in the end. I'm not gonna say what it was because I'm I don't know if you're ever gonna watch it. But if you do, I don't want to spoil it. So I'm like, uh, it's it's a great show, and then I just I just don't need that ending. I just need that ending, like, you know, cut it short <laughs> and end it at a, at a certain point and I'm happy with it. But other than that, I'm like, no. Mm -mm. I had a thought yes. of another thing okay. that I didn't like, or like, I think that could have been done better. Okay. Did you ever watch, um, oh shit, it's the, uh, the Blake Lively and Anna Kendrick movie, the one that was meant to be like, it was marketed as being like, oh, so many plot twists. I can't remember what it's fucking, Simple Favor, that's what it's called. Sim oh, with Blake Lively. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you did you ever see that? No. Don't. <laughs> it's gonna really piss me off. Yeah, no. To be honest, it pissed me off okay. in that I liked the fact that there was a lot of really like outlandishly insane things about it. Right, yeah. whole thing was that like she was um, Anna Kendrick's character was just like she's just, like this blogger mom and and like she she ends up getting like embroiled in this kind of mystery to do with Blake Lively and like she's there mm -hmm. and then suddenly she disappears and all this other stuff and it's like based on all this stuff that's like twist 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 like especially within the last 10 minutes there's like twist after twist after twist after twist and you're kind of sitting there going okay yeah I kind of I kind of dig this what I didn't like was that by the end of all the twists they they turned like an interesting kind of morally weird and like I don't actually know where this character lies character and Anna Kendrick into oh actually she was a really good guy all along it's like no fuck that make her like a bit fucked up like everybody else you know um it that like it was it, yeah. <laughs> yeah it was like it twisted it was like twist 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 and then it the twist ended before I feel like it they should have ended like I like there were so many twists I actually felt like there should have been one more twist to show actually this character that you think is a turn is actually kind of a good guy mm -hmm. isn't as good as you think they are they mm -hmm. might be mostly good but like actually they've got like a bit of like a morally complicated like actually they did do something really fucked up and like nobody in the story is as as, as as sort of morally pure as you think they are but no 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 they just kind of left it at the end to have her kind of be the good guy and i was a bit like why oh it would piss me off I, why yeah make her a bad guy too make them all bad guys they all kind of suck in some form or another but like it made them all interesting yeah you've made them less interesting by yeah. making them more m morally one color i'm like yeah, nah, yeah, yeah. fuck that i don't i'm not into this yeah oh, God, no. <laughs> so my my yeah my i think my twist i think my way of fixing that would be one more twist one more. just i can't remember exactly like the specific because the ending is literally batshit um oh in a way that is very fun but again it should have had like just one more just yeah. one more yeah like and it I, I would have been really on board with it um but yeah it was like uh it was really frustrating that one yeah don't watch that one it's gonna fuck you over yeah no 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 <laughs> you, the, the way you said it already i was like no mm, 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 no 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 this is not for me uh before i say the second thing i mm. need to fix I will once again say that uh, there's a GoFundMe going for our friend Jay. Uh, we will put the link in the description and uh, I will put it here as well so you can see it here as well. Uh, she's great. We love her and she de deserves help. So, yep. you know, if you can spare any money, please think about it. If you can't, even just sharing the GoFundMe on your socials could be a big help. So please, please, please consider. And mm -hmm. uh, we are grateful. Uh, and then the second uh, from my two and a half is a movie that recently came out on Netflix and I was pretty pumped uh, to see it and then it was one of the greatest fucking disappointments of my life. <laughs> it's called Awake. Uh, ah, yes. Yes. Uh, I even tweeted about it. It got... it, it went a We had a wide, discussion right? a little bit about it because we were bit, talking yeah. about um, how it was the... there was the Korean version and then they... No, no, no. It's not that one. No, is it? No, it's I'm talking... You talk it... about Alive. Oh, uh, <laughs> the words are very similar. <laughs> that's, 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 that's fair. Awake, the concept is fucking great. Like, I, I think that would, what was like really intriguing for me. And that's why I got really excited for it. So basically the concept of the movie is that uh, suddenly people can't fall asleep. They just can't. Oh, yeah. 
they they just it you know ev- everyone except for one little girl and i love that concept i was like okay i fucking dig this because you know there are obviously studies about what would happen if you wouldn't uh sleep for a yeah you die of, yeah you <laughs> you die you start hallucinating and hi everybody the, the... if you're not sleeping properly and you're doing this on purpose go to sleep yes you need sleep <laughs> for your brain to work. It's very important for you. I'm so. I just. I need people to understand how important sleeping is. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, it's it's a uh, it's a great. I think it's a fucking great concept. And with a much better screenplay, it would have been an amazing movie. But this screenplay sucks. I'm sorry, <laughs> but it's just so stupid. Like they basically. Um, so suddenly, I think it starts with all the electricity co- uh, going on, uh, like even in the cars, and then they fell into the river. Uh, the the main characters, you know, the mom who's played by Gina Rodriguez and, and the two kids, and then, uh, um, you know, the little girl needs CPR, which becomes very important in the end. Uh, and then they all go home. And as they go home, they realize that none of them can fall asleep within... I'm kidding you not like within like a few hours and they already make a huge deal out of it like oh my god we can't fall asleep how interesting i feel like it would take you a few days to like really kind of go the first night you'd be like i just didn't sleep i couldn't i don't know i couldn't couldn't really sleep it was weird and then after like maybe another night you'd be like something something something's off here (laughs) but not here not here the mom Jenna Rodriguez immediately goes because she works in a lab lab and she immediately goes to the lab and then sees all these people like fucking everyone in the city being like we can't sleep so let's party and I'm like no (laughs) you fucking won't realize it this quickly (laughs) it's like what the hell is going on you wouldn't realize it within a few hours that oh we cannot sleep it's all of us oh let's party it wouldn't happen and everyone is and everyone is in front of this lab and that's where they party and then it turns out they put this storyline in there that Gina is taking uh, uh, sleeping drugs uh, from the lab and selling it to drug dealers and that's her side uh, you know okay. money uh, and uh, the drug dealer somehow teleports there immediately and he's like yeah get me some more of that drug because now we need it even more we can sell it for double and everything and i kid you not it's and it's the editing's fault it's night when she goes into the lab and you know there's no security guards there's no one in there anymore like they already abandoned the fucking place she goes in there grabs the key suddenly uh, the scene changes. We see military personnel coming into the lab. Already, everyone is asleep outside. The people who were part well, asleep, they are already setting up tents and whatnot, but they obviously cannot sleep. And then the military comes in, and as they come in, Gina only gets to the lab where the, where the medicine are, just in that second. And are you telling me that she spent at least four hours just standing at the same place and waiting for them to arrive, and she couldn't get Get to do medicine until that part because when the military arrives it already it's already cracking down so i'm like what the fuck <laughs> somebody didn't put together the internal um no. logic of that movie not at all and it happens not just this once it happens all the time in this film like you can tell when it's night and when it's in the morning and i don't know if it was like a freaking weird creative decision to make it even more confusing like how they would experience it and then suddenly everybody finds out about the little girl that she's the only one who can sleep and and for some reason they want to keep her like there's a scene in the church uh, uh where where they are trying to get the little girl because she's the only one who can sleep and uh, i don't know what their idea is or what they would do with her like do they think if if they touch her that they can suddenly fall asleep or <laughs> what the fuck is happening but they are trying to grab her and then there's a gun and they start shooting each other and i'm like you know what most scenes need to be better gun yes. and then they they meet uh 
prisoners along their ways because they were just let out because already you know everyone already knows that the bird is burning down because no one can sleep i don't know how everyone knows already or why would prison go or why the world would bow down if it because princesses they can't sleep yeah I, I, I it's it doesn't make any sense it, it doesn't make any sense and i will get to this very quickly in the end they figure out like uh, obviously they found because the government already knew that something like this is going to happen at least this is how it comes down because they already have a lab set up and the military is taking care of it and everything but they are already at the stage where they are hallucinating and then you know they get the little girl but they already had one patient who also could fall asleep but it was like an 80 year old grandma and uh, and you know they they did awful surgeries on her to find out why she can fall asleep why others can't and then it becomes this oh my god i have to save my child moment and everyone dies basically in the lab like every single fucking one of them just they just die uh and then the mom gina rodriguez again uh she dies as well after a while. i don't know what happens with her i don't remember that's how forgettable the whole thing was uh but basically haha the two kids one of them is like 13 and the other one is like 20 maybe they suddenly realize that the reason that the little girl could fall asleep is because she already died once. Because when they fell into the river, she died in that river. I don't know how, because she's the first one who what hits the surface. What the fuck surface. is this movie? <laughs> and she, she, she died, and because they uh, reviewed her, like, re uh, with Revive her. That's, that's the one. Uh, they, that's why she can fall asleep. Because it was all, what was it? It was like a sunburst of what the fuck that's why all the electricity went out <laughs> and it affected our brain and that's why no one could fall asleep and i was like what so what they do and this is how the movie ends they grab gina rodriguez they push him under the water and they kill her so they can do cpr on her and and bring bring her back and so she can sleep again and i'm like what that's just a bad movie. <laughs> like that's just a bad film. <laughs> it's like what the fuck was this? And the reason why I, I I am laughing at it, but I was really angry with it because I like the concept. I think you can do very interesting things with with the concept of people not being able to fall asleep anymore especially you know how it would affect and what would happen if that would be actually one or even leave out the part where someone can still fall asleep or mm -hmm. have more people who are still able to fall asleep but don't come up with a fucking solution like this like because she died in that river and you know she got cpr and that's why her brain works normally again <laughs> and it's like what like it's just I, a bad I, film. It's, it's just. This is a bad movie. It is. It is. I I suffered, Katie. I suffered. It was Why? just ninety minutes, and I suffered through it. And I was like, no, oh, this is so bad. Uh, and the trailer was great. Like that. That was the one that convinced me. Like, oh wow, this looks very interesting. Uh, yeah, the concept is interesting, and then they made it into this absolute bullshit of a movie. So, <laughs> I I I I. I just wish someone would grab this concept and just make it into like a hundred times better movie because there's potential in it. Like I, I would be very much interested still uh, to to watch a movie that that you know gets into this concept of what would happen if suddenly we lose the ability to to sleep. Mm. So just delete this movie. That's my solution. <laughs> just delete this one and just. With yeah. a better screenwriter and then just, just... yeah <laughs> there's your, there's your solution don't make it no yeah <laughs> oh, i'm ah. just like and i love you know like you know i love Janelle rodriguez i i think she's great and and you can see that she's trying to do everything here as well but it's just, it just doesn't work it just doesn't so oh, yeah i'm trying I'm trying to read the plot of A Simple Favor again to try and figure out what it was that I wanted, like, out of the movie. Um, I don't know if the Wikipedia plot is doing, it does a very good job of, like, explaining everything. But um, I think I just want it, because, like, 
um uh Anna Kendrick's character and Blake Lively's character have a bit of like a like a flirtatious sort of relationship they they they, they it's, a, it's a bit gay it's a little bit gay mm-hmm. and I think I wanted to uh, it's like she ends up basically um it, um Emily who's Blake Lively's character ends up doing a bunch of shit that is yeah. like not like a morally questionable um but she's really cool and I kind of didn't care that she was doing a bunch of like illegal shit and and so at the end of it it kind of I was like I want I kind of wanted um Anna Kendrick and Blake Lively's character to end up on the same team at the end where they kind of screw everybody else over and then kind of go off into the sunset like yeah I mean we're a bit like they basically just sort of turn into sort of criminal girlfriends together it's like that would have been more fun instead of making Anna Kendrick into just sort of like a good girl at the end and getting her arrested and I gotcha I was like boo nobody wants that I'm, I'm not make them questionable it. it's it's more fun that way i'm not gonna watch it like, uh, you already convinced me then this is not for me i would it would probably piss me off <laughs> big time <laughs> uh but yeah those were my choices and i will say an honorable mention mm-hmm. uh which was something that i was really looking forward to because i think the marketing was a bit misleading mm. uh but it was exodus uh gods and kings which was the most exodus story. you mean the fucking whitewashed jesus uh, yes. um oh, jesus christ that fucking pissed me off yes. so much uh, it's like yeah i know we'll we'll set this movie in in egypt and uh and just cast a bunch of white people to play uh egyptians and yeah. and uh that's fine. Fuck off. Okay. Exactly. That was one of my problems with it, obviously, because why would you do that? Like, I know why you do that. that I, that's I, the I have Ridley a beef Scott with, one, right? Yes. I have yeah, a beef with it... Ridley Scott for, like, ever since uh, he... I'm not going to get into it again. We, it, we know. You know. Uh, so <laughs> the only thing I admire in the guy that it, 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 Sigourney Weaver is usually going to be in there, so I love Sigourney. Uh, but still, like... Maybe just not in this <laughs> place where they should be Egyptian, not white people. And I love Christian Bale. I love jo- Joel Edgerton. I think they are great actors. But like, no, Aaron Paul is in there as well. I love Aaron Paul. Everyone knows that. I love Aaron Paul. But I, I, I no, no, that's that's the that's that's one thing. The other thing, it's obviously the Moses story. I love Prince of Egypt. And a lot of the marketing came off as this is going to be the live action version of uh, DreamWorks' Prince of Egypt. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was looking forward to that. So my fix of, of this disastrous movie, it was very boring as well. I will have to put it out there, uh, is that, first of all, uh, cast the right people, please. Like, hello. Uh, second of all, if you're going to go with this story, uh, I I think uh, I would very much appreciate if someone would make a live action Prince of Egypt. <laughs> just... I just kind of wish they'd stop trying to make biblical epics. That as well, but if if they do decide to make this one, I'm on I'm on board, but only in, in that form because I I really like that story. So much. I think that I seem to remember the thing that really pissed me off about this was uh, he had um, a quote. Um, which was just racist. It was fucking. It was in, insanely racist. Um, which one? Um, uh, he, you mean Christian Bale? Yeah, uh, you know, um, no, um, Lee Scott. In talking about the casting of the film, he said, oh. um, "I can't mind to film with this budget and say that the lead actor is a Muhammad so and so from such and such. I'm not going to get finance." And I'm like, "Shut the fuck up, dude. Your name is Rid. You are Ridley Scott." He said that. Yeah, he did. Oh. Well. No wonder. Oh, and those like seeking to boycott the film should get a life. I just want him to go away. Yeah. Same. Like, thank you, sir, but goodbye. Yeah. There's a, there's a, a, a there was a great um, clip that um, our friend Elliot retweeted the other day of, of um, Steve McQueen 
talking oh. like the only black director and yes. it's like a room full of white directors yes. and they were like so why aren't we more people of color being for in, in, in like in cast in films because why don't you ask them and it's like yeah you know what good point why aren't you casting more people of color in your fucking movies yeah it's not his opportunity it's not his responsibility mm-hmm. to be the changed changing face of like bringing a bunch of like, just cast them yourself yeah <laughs> You don't have to go into every movie casting it with just white people. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's like, here's the chance. Go ahead. Just fucking do it. Just, but do the, it. just you know what? I was gonna say if, if it makes sense for your story, and I'm like, no, 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 just do it anyway. Just do it. I don't even care if like supposedly like X, Y, and Z. It's like no, just fucking yeah, just do it. Yeah. It's not that hard. No, it it really isn't. <laughs> so you know, just go ahead. Why not? Amazing. Um, yeah. So yeah. All right. This was fun. Hmm. Uh, before we go anywhere, I have two recommendations, which oh. one of them I already mentioned. We haven't uh, done this in a while. Yes, I thought that maybe today. It's it's like um, it's a preview because I haven't seen them either yet, but I would like to pull some attention on them. So okay. one of them is Truth Be Told season one, which is already on oh, yeah. Apple TV. Uh, but uh, season two is coming on the 20th of August and it's I watched the trailer finally and it looks great I only I kind of only I kind of half watched the trailer because it was one of the things it was on an Instagram story Um, uh, (laughs) and I was and it was like it wasn't like like the IGTV yeah. Instagram thing. It was literally somebody put them like in two parts. So I was like only half getting bits and pieces. And yeah. I also was sitting there going, where, where is he? Where is he? Because I was looking for Hale Apple in the trailer. And it's like, there's one shot of him in there. And I was like, this is enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It, it just, uh, I honestly just get away. I love Octavia Spencer. I love Kate Hudson as well. So, you know, I am already on board. I cannot wait for it to arrive. Uh, and the other thing I would like to point your attention towards is coming on Prime, I believe. And it's from a book that I dearly love. Uh, oh. And it has an amazing cast, including Melissa McCarthy, Nicole Kidman and Luke Evans. And it's called Nine Perfect Strangers. Uh, and it's going to be a series, I believe. I don't think it, they made it into a movie. It's going to be a series on Prime. So Yeah, miniseries. Please tell me it's this. There's like... Well, it sounds like a, 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 a an Agatha Christie thing. It's, it's yeah. It's, Is it's, it? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Love a good story. Yeah. I'm like, I'm getting, and then there were none vibes from the title, and I'm like, yes. And uh, we, it, it's a bit annoying, but they are doing the same thing they did with The Boys season two, uh, which is yeah, putting up like four episodes and then yeah. doing it weekly. That's so. So oh they are gosh. putting up three episodes on the 18th of August. Mm. And then uh, from then onwards, it's going to be from week to week. I'm not too happy about that. I'm not going to mm. lie. I'm like, oh, why can't you just put it all up? Uh, but once again, it, it already has a great cast. Uh, uh, it has Regina Hall in it. I didn't even know that she's going to be in that. Oh, shit, yeah. I love Regina, so already on board. Tiffany Boone is going to be in it. Uh, Mervyn Gregg. Lee, uh, Les Hill, I like I like that guy. Manny Yacinto, I love him as well. I was going to say, I just saw Manny uh, Yacinto. Oh my god. It's Michael nice. Shannon is in it as well. Uh, okay, so it's... Oh, and Summer Weaving. I love Summer Weaving. One more recommendation, because I love that movie. Uh, Ready or Not. Uh, she's... I have been meaning to watch that for fucking ages. Please watch it. I, I live for that movie. I love Ready or Not. It's just friend, insane. Um... Friend, uh, a friend of the show, my friend uh, John, yes. told me to watch it ages ago, and I had to, fully intended to, but it wasn't available anywhere for like a really long time. It wasn't like I had would have had to rent it and stuff like that in order to to get it, and I wasn't. Yeah, I, I, other things you know yeah. came up and all that sort of stuff, but it was like I think it must be on Prime at this point or something. I think so. I think so. it's. Ugh. Oh, I love Ready or Not. It's just batshit crazy, and I love that. Uh, so yeah, these are the two TV shows that I would. Uh point you towards because they're awesome. Damn, it's not actually you have to no, buy it's not. it oh god damn it. you have to like you have to fully buy it on these things Wait, but what, what does that mean how much is it as in like you can't rent it you have to you buy it for it a, you oh. can't rent it you you have to buy them if you're gonna buy, you get them um, digitally which is very annoying it is it's oh i love that movie so much <laughs> it's, it's just so good 
I watched it like I I unfortunately I made the stupid decision uh, that I didn't watch it in the cinema. Uh, I think instead I watched Pet Cemetery, but I am not sure. I know mm. I'd made a different choice, and I wish I wouldn't have. I should have just watched Ready or Not. But uh, ever since I got it on Blu-ray, I watched it like five times or something like that. Sometimes I just randomly put it in because it's just oh, fucking great. <laughs> And Summer is just... Uh, everyone is awesome in it. And it's just so batshit crazy. Uh, I like those movies. <laughs> I gotta say it. I like she, when they just go on. Just, you know, I know. Is she related to other weavings? Or is she just... um? I am not sure. No, just the same. Just the, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's what I figured. Uh, but yeah. Do you have any recommendations for our lovely listeners and... YouTubers. Do I have any recommendations? She's um No, not really. I mean other than, you know, people should sign up to drop out so I can talk to more people about Dimension 20 stuff. Fine. Because you can watch the first episode of Misfits and Magic on YouTube uh, currently, and if you like it, you should sign up for drop out and watch the rest of it because it's really fucking good. <laughs> Fair. Fair. I, 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 I will still have to catch up on that, but uh, I, I will get around to it. Oh, it's so much fun. Yeah. So much fun. I just, um, everything they're doing over there at um, Dropout is really great and they're good people. And I just think that they're making cool stuff, which I like a lot. Fair. So, yeah. I, I, will, I will get around to it. I will. It's just uh, too many. Yeah, things. I know. Yeah. We're, we're in different lanes currently. Yeah. Yeah. Too many. I, I am back to work, guys. So, you mm. know, it's uh, we are recording this on Sunday, which is not our usual day. No. But uh, yeah, this week was a lot. So yeah, hopefully it will slowly stabilize and then mm. we can get back to our normal track. But, uh, yeah. uh, next week we have to, well, I, I have to send in the book, which is very exciting. And then, Yeah, I got to write my review. That's been on my mind. I, yes. I'll, I'll do that. And we just week. have to keep our fingers crossed. But we have many plans. So. Mm. You're going to see. You're going to see. Uh, but anyway, this was fun. Uh, yep. I, I I love talking about things like this and I very much needed it this week it helped it helped, it helped. Mm. Um, once again we are uh, asking you to consider donating to Chase GoFundMe yep. uh, it's in the description it's yep. up on the screen as well um, yep. and um, yeah we love you all and thank yep. you for joining again and we'll see you next week Please go get vaccinated. Oh, yes. And I say that because I got vaccinated for the second time yesterday, which is why currently this hurts. Um, Fair. <laughs> but yes, please get vaccinated. Please. If please. you have the ability to do so, please look into it. There are a lot of places that are doing, especially I think the US are doing these more than in the UK, but mm. a lot of places that are doing like walk-in clinics and whatnot. So if you're not sure about when you can get yours done, See if you can just do go to like a walk-in place because then you, they can just figure it out from there. Yeah. I saw a crazy one on Twitter. Like they put it somewhere in a cinema or something. I don't remember what it was. But like there was a picture as well that they just just put it in the middle and people were just like, you know, just wanted to get into, I don't know. It, it might have been a cinema. I'm not 100% sure. But it was so random that everyone was like, why? 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 Why did you put it there? <laughs> my my favorite was the uh, the the clip of um, Yo Yo Ma getting his vaccination and then just sitting down and playing the cello for everybody. It's like you oh, get yeah, a free Yo Yo yeah. Ma concert <laughs> just to get vaccinated because he's just there. Yeah. I'm like, I love Yo Yo Ma. <laughs> I mean, that was Yo Yo Ma great. rules. <laughs> <laughs> true. <laughs> that is true. But get vaccinated, guys. Yeah. We don't need another fucking wave. I'm already a bit afraid <laughs> that it's unavoidable. But uh, it's all up to you. Just jab, jab. We both already have it. So, yeah. Like I said, got my second one yesterday. Yeah. Two weeks, I will be immune to all things. That's not how this works. No. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, just do it. Uh, but we love you all and see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.